Hello and welcome to Life Questions. I'm your host, Bill Harris. If you have questions about life that you want answers to, perhaps we can help with scriptural insight. Many of our viewers have mailed or emailed questions and concerns that range from the end time events to abortion rights, to family values, to whether God really exists. Well, today's invited guests are made up of a panel of local ministers who have been praying over your letters of concern and are here to address these matters from a biblical perspective. Let's meet our guest at this time. First, we have Mark Bird, who is pastor and missionary of Revive Ohio. Secondly, Pastor Tim Benjamin of Wayne Street United Methodist Church. Next, Pastor Rick Shear of the Living Hope Assembly of God Church in St. Mary's. And Pastor Greg Fox, known as the Hillbilly Preacher from Bluffton <laughs> Trinity United Methodist Church. We're happy to have all of you with us today, gentlemen. Thanks, thanks for having us. Good, good. You know, one age-old question that Christians are very often confronted with when talking to unbelievers is the question of hell. Why would God as you say such a loving God, why would he send anybody to hell? How do you answer that, Pastor Benjamin? Well, I think uh, uh, one of the reasons why it exists, why hell exists, is because God is a loving God. Uh, one of the things that, that we don't seem to understand, that if you love somebody, there has to be free will, there has to be choice. God is not in the interest of creating robots, nor is he interested in coercing anybody into making choices. If there's a mistake out there and it's something that we decide we want to do, he's going to allow us to do that. However, we may get to make the choice. We don't get to choose the consequences that come with that. Mm -hmm. So God wants us to make a, a free and clear choice to be able to follow him, serve him, live in relationship with him. That's his, his desire. But the problem comes in is that uh, if we decide we don't want to do that, he will allow us to make that choice because he does not want it to be something that's forced upon us because there's no love in, in coercion. There's no love in forcing somebody to do something, even if it's the right thing. If you got to really uh, bear down on them and, and, and try to coerce them or scare them or frighten them or threaten them to get you to do what you want, that, that's not love. And, and, and God wants to avoid that. So if people want to choose to live in separation from him, he hates it but he'll allow the choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'd like to add, Bill, in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 30 and verse 19, it says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. So it's a, it's a choice. Mm -hmm. right. It is a free will choice and that both you and your descendants may live. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that really points out and, and illustrates to us that it's a free will choice for yeah. us. Bill, I also think that we need to think about God's definition of death. You know, we look at it from our human definition of mm -hmm, death, mm -hmm. and we see death as an end point, and God sees it as a transition point. You know, what is God protecting those women and children from if that society would have continued in those, in those directions they were going in their mm -hmm. sinful lives? And also, we got to think about the definition of a loving God. You know, too many times we want to put a human definition on that mm -hmm. rather than a biblical definition on mm -hmm. that. And, and that makes a big difference. Because yeah. the initial question did ask, why would God commission a society? Right. right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you want to add to that? Yeah, and he doesn't, he doesn't make our choices for us. We have those choices to make. Exactly. So, I mean, we're the ones choosing to go to hell, not God's not choosing right. for us. Uh, you know, this is a question that I think that's somewhat similar to that. It, it's basically, I know of a family who seems to do everything right, raising their children to know Christ. But as adults, only two of the four children are serving Christ now. What went wrong is what that question is. What went wrong? Uh, are we to assume that something went wrong because only two of the four chose to go on with Christ? Yeah, and honestly, Bill, uh, nothing went wrong because that is still human will, free choice, and, it, and every person chooses. It's a great illustration uh, when I share the gospel with people that you can't just get to heaven because your parents are going. Mm -hmm. So every single person has a choice. And so even all of our children, and the promise that we hold on to is out of Proverbs where it says that if you raise your children in the nurture and the admission of the Lord, even if yeah. they depart, 
they will return. And that's our prayer, that they all return to the Lord, but we have to do our part as stewards of these children to raise them right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think one of the things that, that we lose track of is, is a movement like, like my brother Mark here with Revive Ohio. If we could force everybody to follow Christ, your movement would be a lot <laughs> right. different. You exactly. know, your mission work would be a lot different. We'd be all right. pumping iron so we could drag people to church. And that, right. that's, that's really, that's really not, not what we're trying to do. Uh, <coughs> if something is forced or it's not natural, yeah. I don't care what kind of reward you offer, you can't force somebody into a, con- a conversion experience that they're not prepared for. Right. And, and, and everybody's, uh, everybody's uh, journey toward that conversion moment, toward that moment of sanctification, it c- comes and it, it, the path looks different. Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, just because the path may not look like the way we want it to look, you know, my path didn't look the way I wanted it to look either, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> right. And, and, uh, and, but we're all getting there and we're all moving on toward perfection, as John Wesley taught us. And as we continue, you know, along that journey, there's going to be some moments in there where we're going, you know, I don't really see the point of that. I don't know why we had to go through that. I wish I could have done something different. But at the end of the day, uh, we're all walking the road that God set before us the best that we can. And the big thing you got to remember, too, is it's just like the, the mustard seed parable. You know, the good Lord, when, when we're raising children, we're planting that seed of salvation. We're planting that, that hope and that desire of eternal life. And all we can do is educate our children to that point them in the right direction. But again, back to the free choice, they have to make that choice which way they want to go. Yeah. Yeah. Let's change the, the, the whole mindset here, the whole thinking in, in the next question. Uh, one viewer writes, a Muslim girl started working in my office. She seemed really nice and, 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 it, was caused, and it has caused me to wonder what is really wrong with her religion? I've heard that Muslims are hateful to all Christians, but she really acts nicer than some Christians I know. Uh, there's no question there at all, mm-hmm. but uh, there's an obvious observation. Do, what do you see into that question? Uh, well, isn't it Patrick? interesting that, that she had a, that this person who wrote the question uh, ha- had, a, had an idea of what, what right. these people were like. Uh-huh. And then they went out and met one and found out that, wow, there's exceptions to that. There's exceptions to the reputation. Uh, there are plenty of people out there who claim to represent things that I'm a part of that I do not want to be defined by them. Right. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of uh, hate-filled uh, stuff going on out there and people putting rhetoric out there that I don't agree with and people trying to defend positions I certainly don't agree with. I wouldn't want to be defined by them either, and I think many of our Muslim brothers and sisters feel the same way. There's a lot of stuff in the media out there where they're going, I don't know what they're talking about, but this is not where I'm at. Yeah. You know, And I think that... You know, we, we can respectfully disagree on some points. I mean, there's certainly some disagreement between the two faiths about our opinion of Jesus, clearly. But, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day, uh, I, I, don't know how much, I don't know how much ground we're gaining by hating somebody in the name of the Prince of Peace. I just, mm-hmm. I don't know, I don't know how we're getting there, you know. That's exactly the point. Too many yeah. times the world hears what the Christians are against. Mm-hmm. When Scripture tells right. us, That's how true. will they right. know you? Well, it's for your love, for your love. not right. for what you hate. Right. So, That's yes. excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Any other comments on that? Well, in the middle of the, in the, middle of the, of the statement there, the question, the actual question which right. you brought up before, you know, um, why is their religion wrong? What, why is it different? Why don't we agree with their religion? And it comes down to they view God as a prophet, not as the Son of God. Exactly. Or Jesus, excuse me. Jesus exactly. is a prophet, not the right. Son of God. Mm-hmm. A major decision, which is, to your point, yeah. uh, is a, the bone of contention that we have. But yeah. I think you're saying, nonetheless, with those differences, we can still get along. We yeah. should be able to yeah. still get along. We, we will never convince anybody of, of the Lordship of Christ and, and the Savior level and the Messiah and the Prince. We will never convince anybody of that by acting like jerks to people who don't believe. <laughs> it's never going to work. Right. Never. Amen to that. Or even jerks to the people that do believe. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's right. That's excellent. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, moving right along here. Um, let's see. We oh, should Christians be cremated? That was another question uh, that came to us. Should Christians be cremated? Uh, yes. Um, I, as I shared earlier, that I've been asked this question uh, multiple times over the last several months, and I know we discussed that there's some secular reasons, the cost of funerals and things like that. But Scripture really doesn't address cremation at all, for or against. Now, in 2 Kings, uh, it does talk about uh, the idea of uh, putting human bones on the altar, Mm -hmm. defiling the altor. Mm -hmm. But that's not really cremation. That's that's making a worship 
of the human bones. And that's, right. so that's something different. And uh, I Good believe that, I, I do believe that uh, cremation only speeds up the uh, returning our bodies to dust. And if God can create us from dust, he can recreate us from yeah. dust. We, and just, I, we just had that conversation with Ash Wednesday. Yes. Remember that you're a dust and the dust you shall return. Cremation simply speeds that process yeah. along. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. My, my intention myself is to be cremated. Yes. Uh, and uh, have my ashes put someplace important. I'm sure I'll think of someplace. <laughs> but, 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 that, but that's the idea. Um, that's my plan because it's going to happen anyways. You know, like you said, there's a financial concern to that, certainly. But uh, I don't, I don't see why that would be a problem in that it's going to happen anyways right so right i also plan on being cremated yeah but now mark i know you had kind of a different point of view from the yeah. family issues <laughs> yeah. yeah i've had this uh this actual question come up recently with my own parents and there was discussion around this question and and they asked me my own parents asked me and they're christians and they asked me about being cremated and i said there is no uh, specific scripture that addresses cremation uh, although the only thing that I could find is when you look back at the forefathers, you know, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, mm -hmm. uh, it says that their sons returned home to bury their fathers when they died. Mm -hmm. So they buried them uh, in the Old Testament with the, our forefathers. But it, again, scripture doesn't specifically address cremation, but it was brought to my attention by my 15 year old son uh, when my parents decided that they were considering cremation he didn't want that to happen because he wanted to be able to visit them and say his final goodbyes uh, in a standard funeral mm -hmm. uh, situation. But again, scripturally, it doesn't specifically address cremation. But that's a valid thing, you know, being able to say goodbye. And, and I've, we've had some family issues in our family where they talk about, I don't have a place to go and visit. Right. Um, and so that, that is a real issue as far as personal issue, right. not scriptural issue. Correct. Well, right, I think we'll pause now and just take a break and we'll come back and there are a few other uh, questions that we haven't gotten to yet that have come in from viewers. We want to get to those as well. Stay with us. We'll be back momentarily. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pasture suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. Thank you for staying with us. Let's get to the next question from our viewers. I recently met a woman, this letter says, who did not know the rainbow came from the Bible. She thought it was something created by the gay and lesbian movement because it, of course, has the, mm -hmm. they have taken up the colors of the rainbow. Uh, what is the true meaning of the rainbow? These days, I only seem to see it in connection with Gay Pride Month and other associated things. But it is from the days of Noah, right? Is what she asks. Mm -hmm. uh, the simple answer there is, is yes, it is. Uh, one, one of the problems that, that needed to be addressed uh, once Noah and, and his family and the animals got off the ark is, is this going to happen again? You know, the next time it clouded up, are we going to be freaking out thinking something bad's going to happen? And uh, part of that goes back to uh, where the world was at that time. Uh, they lived and died by water, meaning mm -hmm. too much, too little. I mean, you either die of thirst, your crops all dry out, your animals all die. Society. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, getting the right rain at the right time and the right amount was just, I mean, the pinnacle of importance. So for them to uh, have this fear of water, which they did, I mean, we see that in many of the Old Testament stories, not only in the flood, but the right. parting of the Red Sea and a lot of these other stories about God taking something that they were just, cr just very, very afraid of and illustrating control over it. Again, in the, even in the New Testament, when Jesus was walking on the water, it was exhibiting control over something that was very fearful. I never thought of it in that context. Yeah. Go ahead. Right. Go ahead. Yeah. And, and so it was the idea of, of God ex exerting that kind of control. He put the sign in the sky to say, you don't have to worry about this anymore. Right. And, and, that, and that was the purpose of the sign. It was assurance to say that the massive flood that covered the earth for, for weeks and weeks and months and months on end is not going to happen again. You don't need to be concerned about right. that. And it was, it was supposed to be, and that's what it was int originally intended to be, was a sign of assurance that uh, the next time the rain started to fall, you don't have to be afraid because this time it will stop. Mm. 
Yeah. I wonder then what, uh, what uh, inspired the uh, gay and lesbian movement to take up those rainbow colors as a part of their cause. Any, any thoughts on that? I, I, I'm really stretching to find out how that came into being. Well, when you, um, see, the, when you see the rainbow, and it is a promise from God not to flood the earth again, it, it's a comforting sign. When you see that, it makes you comfortable. You're, okay, even though it's really nasty out, we're not going to be eliminated by, by the rain. When it comes out, it makes you comfortable. And I just, I don't know. I'm just guessing here, reaching mm -hmm. out at mm -hmm. straws, but possibly their, their feeling is that's a sign of comfort to people. They see the rainbow. It's a promise of things to come, promise that it'll be good, promise that life everlasting, I guess, is one way to look at it. Mm -hmm. um, that's not my, my interpretation of it, but that is possibly something they could look for. Many times, um, I don't, lack of a better word, sin takes the form of something that God has promised and uses it for something evil. We see that time and time again. And so I think part of that is the reason uh, for that. They're taking something that God promised, something that God did use for comfort, and, and using it to, uh, for their own agenda, uh, per se. Because sin will take on the likeness of God as much yes, as it, it can, yes, to it take will. us as far as it can. It certainly will. And uh, where does that lead us when we go down a road where we, where we take what has been right in one way and we make it right in another way to cover up something where God has said, don't go there. Mm -hmm. and, and we take what is right and we use it to cover up something else that is not right. Well, the power of the symbol still, still exists. Exactly. And, and the comfort thing that you mentioned, it's exactly right. And uh, people want to, uh, when, when they're concerned, they want to latch onto something. Right. I mean, you think about now uh, in our world today, you think about the coronavirus and everybody's, you know, latching on to all of these symbols and looking to the government to fix this and they're 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 scared to death and, and I, I get that i mean it's a, a virus is scary so during times of that we want to latch on to something and uh so when people are in a situation where they're concerned they want to latch on to something so why not latch on to a symbol of comfort which is what right. the rainbow was supposed to be and i think that's what's going on so. okay but I, I i want to pull something out here that probably isn't being brought out to the fullest in this um, people like to feel comfortable when they're sinning. Mm -hmm. Yes. Don't they? Yes. And I think that may have been what you were alluding to. You yes. didn't quite that, go that, there. That is exactly what I was alluding to. You know, people do want to be comfortable in their sin because if they're not comfortable, they might have to change. They might have to get into God's Word. You know, part of the issue here with the whole question is Bible illiteracy. You know, we don't know what Scripture says. So, we, so like the lady, you know, she thought it was from from them yeah. and rather than from scripture. And then even at the end, but it's from the days of Noah, right? You know, even the lady that was asking the question or the person that was asking the question was saying, I'm not even real sure, but what is it? You know, it brings the comfort and, and Satan will always use something to draw us in. And that, that can draw us in and that can give us comfort because if we're comfortable, we don't change. It's when we become uncomfortable that we are changed towards God. Is it in a way when, when, when a man seeks to be a woman and a woman seeks to be a man, is that in part of asking his ministers? Is that, is that denying who God really made you? Is that rejecting who God really made you? Well, it's, it's any time you, uh, you t take what's part of the uh, the way things were intended to be, and marriage just certainly has a way it was intended to be, and try to make it something it's not, that becomes a problem. Whether it be the roles between a ma husband and wife, or if it would be turned into something else. Uh, God intended the purpose of marriage to be procreation for children, right. so children right. have a place to grow up. To try to use it for anything else, be it, you know, morphed into some other form or whatever, that, that becomes a problem because now you're trying to use an institution that God set up for a specific purpose and use it for something else. It'd be the, the same thing as you got a tool in your toolbox. Uh, it would do great work if you use it correctly. However, you try to use one of those tools for something one designed to do and you're probably going to end up bleeding. That, that's the voice of experience. <laughs> right. I've been there. But, but that's kind of how it works is those tools will break if you don't use them correctly or they will hurt you if you don't use them correctly. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where, where the institution of marriage comes from. God had a, a specific plan for it, and when we try to make it be something it's not, uh, 
it puts us into a, a place that's difficult to be. We're seeing among uh, athletes and movie stars, for instance, uh, just recently, saying that, well, I am not going to tell my child he is a boy or he is a girl. I'm going to let them make up their own minds on that and let them follow their own identity. When I would, I would, I would surmise that this same parent would not allow the child to decide whether or not they're going to go to college. They're <laughs> yeah, probably right. going to say, yeah. you're going to college. Right. I mean, right. because that's, what, that's the importance of education. But something as important as their sexual identity right. to let a child who does not have that much at all <laughs> in the way of intellect to make a decision like that, mm -hmm. to, to allow that child to make that decision. I, is, that, um, is that a parent giving up um, a responsibility that they, that they really should keep control over? Well, let, let's, let's really think about what, what, what you're saying there, because I agree. I, what you're saying is correct. Uh, the problem I run into is, is how long are we going to allow people uh, a platform to talk about morality or a platform to talk about uh, spirituality or how to do this when their biggest thing in life is they can catch a ball or they can read lines somebody else wrote? I mean, how, how, how much authority do we want to give those people? You know, uh, most of them have, have wrecked lives anyways and, and, and many problems. And, and we allow them to be the ones who get to speak on these political, spiritual, social issues uh, when the only thing in life they've been able to do is to, you know, play sports or right. read lines somebody else wrote. And I don't know why we allow them to be the ones who are the, the trendsetters in these very, very important issues. That's a difficult thing. Something to look at here. Uh, and as we're talking about the whole, the whole issue here, what it comes down to is Satan will use anything that can mask the actual problem and make us, as we said, comfortable with the rainbow in that particular situation. There's never any type of sin that on the surface, there's not some kind of gratification or some type of enjoyment, might mm -hmm. say, right. out of it. Now, is it the right enjoyment? No. But there are things that Satan makes it so that we feel like, oh, this is okay. In the situation with the, the gay lesbian movement with the, the rainbow, that's a sign to us as comfort that the Lord, you know, makes us a promise. Okay, we know it's not right. You should not do it. It says right in the Bible to stay away from it. Although, you know, it's kind of comforting. It's got the, the rainbow issue there. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And that's just not how it works. And Satan does that to us in numerous ways, whether it's alcohol, whether it's drugs, no matter what it is. And we cannot give him enough acknowledgement to what he is doing make, to make those actions acceptable. We have mm -hmm. to listen to what the good Lord tells us. Okay, have we exhausted that? Were you gonna say something? Bill, I Come was. On. I was just gonna to add to that, that when someone says that, listen, I'm not sure what gender I am, or I'm not sure what gender my child is. Mm -hmm then that is saying to God that you are a God who makes mistakes because yeah. God does not make mistakes. God chooses. And he said, I knew you before, you know, in your, in, when you were in your mother's womb, I knew you then. And so God specifically has a plan and a purpose for every person. And for us to say, well, God, that's not really who my child should be or wants to be. Then you're saying, well, God, you don't know any better. I know better than you. And I think that's where yeah. it boils down to. How do, you, how do you carefully then explain to a person, let's say it's a man, he feels that I'm a man, but I'm trapped in a woman's body. Or I'm a woman and I'm trapped in a man's body. How do you minister and explain something like that, what you just said to somebody, uh, without offending them or, or trying to get them to see that they're off track somehow. It's a very sensitive issue, isn't it? It is a very serious issue, and I don't necessarily directly go towards, okay, this is sin. You know, it's been my experience that somebody that says those things and feels those ways, they've usually been abused in the past. Mm -hmm. And to answer your original question about the parent giving up their right, they're not just giving up their, their right and their responsibility. They're actually abusing that child because they're not directing that child in the way that the child needs to be directed. Uh, children don't know. Their minds aren't developed. Right. Uh, but I, 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 I go from a point of ministering to their needs and finding out, well, why do you think that? Where does that come from? Who told you that? Too many times it's been, we've been told that. 
Right. And and going from that point of view rather than just going from attacking the sin itself. Well, we used to call it we used to call it a, a, a medical issue. It was called gender dysphoria. I mean, right. it used to have a name. Right. And we would treat people for that. And 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 I've never seen any disorder or confusion that was made better by saying, "Oh, it's all right." You know, pe people have schizophrenia and we think that the chair is talking to me and we say, oh, it's okay. You know, just, maybe right. the chair is talking. That doesn't help them <laughs> right. at all. So yeah. what you're really saying then is truth is what helps. Yes. yes. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're afraid to speak truth anymore yeah. because of the offense that is everywhere. Mm -hmm. So no matter what we say or no matter what stance we have, uh, it's offensive. And no matter how popular that particular issue or movement is, we sometimes are reluctant to speak out the truth yeah, because of it. We all want to be woke. Yeah. Well, Bill, and you made that comment earlier, the fact that how are we not, how do we address it without being offensive? I think there comes a point on, on a lot of different topics. Uh, the good Lord tells us in the Bible to speak truth. And sometimes the truth might be offensive. I think we need to speak truth in a loving way. Right. But yeah, we have to speak the truth. Yes. Now, if that hurts somebody's feelings in the very end, that's not our intention. But on the same token, the good Lord asks us to speak truth. Okay. That's a tough one, isn't it? It is. One last thought, though. Go ahead, go ahead. One last thought, though, is we're still talking about a, a very small minority of people. Right. We're, not, we're talking about 3 to 5%. But the movement is, is, is moving, making changes throughout all of society at every level. Correct. Laws are changing. Regulations are changing. And, and, I, believe, are changing. and, and I believe Even though it's a small all, group. And I believe that's our fault for not too. speaking the truth, sure. just what you I were agree. saying. We don't speak the truth because, again, we don't want to be attacked. Right. You know, even bringing up this issue on a show like this. Yes. You yes. know, we could go back to our personal churches and get attacked. But I'm so thankful that you've brought this up and drew this out, and I'm thankful for the answers my brothers have given. Amen. Yep. Okay, well, thank you very much. And uh, when you get back to your parishioners, <laughs> <laughs> This is not a question that we discussed that we were going to bring up, yeah, right? Know, That's right. what everybody is dealing with it, okay? Yeah. All right? right? Okay. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. We appreciate your time. And uh, by the way, this panel will be back with us uh, for one more show again next week. So if you enjoyed them, wait till next week. Bye-bye <laughs> <laughs> for now. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We are able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.